Right, let's forget about this transfer stuff, Newcastle fans. This is it. For every single person who's ever eaten a ham and peas pudding sandwich, for every person who's ever stumbled out of a bar in the big market, for every person who's ever purchased an overpriced Newcastle top in the Ashley era, for every person who's ever been told to change football clubs in the last 20, 30 years from Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City fans, but we've stayed by our club. Everything that we live for is for this football match. Newcastle United are one game 90 minutes away from a full-time whistle going at St James's Park and confirmation we will be at a Wembley final with one of the best teams and best chances of actually going all the way that I've ever felt in my lifetime. It's the Southampton match preview. It's coming up, so stick around. <laughs> Welcome back to Black and White Banter, you lovely, lovely Newcastle fans. Uh, we're going to come away from the transfer stuff. There's a couple of videos I've done about Shelby and about Anthony Gordon. There's probably going to be more of those videos to come in the next 24 hours as the window draws in. But I don't really like how the transfer window has almost uh, distracted people's attentions from the biggest game in our lives, which I'm going to talk about in our second, in my life, sorry, definitely in my life. If you are new to Black and White Banter, please drop down, give us one of them, even if you're not new, if you're one of my amazing subscribers, hello, I'm getting a f quite a few new faces, which is great. Give us one of them, that goes a very long way, and if you like my opinion by the end of this video, whack that subscribe button. Get us across all social media, Black and White Banter, I've just posted a, another video before I've made this one about a, a video and a, a footage that Anthony Gordon was shown it's all good humour. It's all good humour on Black and White Banter, so make sure you check us out on all socials. So I hope you've got plenty of this. I hope you have plenty of this, because I have already been for about four poos thinking about this match. Might even need it for tears in the stadium on Tuesday night if we get there, and probably another couple of poos, because let's face it, you can't trust to be in toilet rolling the St James's Park toilets. It's Southampton. It's the second leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. And for me, this match is absolutely everything. I'm trying to rein in my emotions talking about it because on the last match preview on the away leg, I felt like it was one of my worst match previews because I was just rumbling on like a nervous idiot. But as I do these videos, as I record this, it makes me start thinking about the magnitude of the game. And that's why I get a bit caught up in it. It's everything. You can stick your European football up your backside to a degree as far as I'm concerned in comparison to winning a cup, in comparison to getting to Wembley, in comparison to Trafalgar Square being taken over by 30, 40, even 50,000 Geordies. These are the days that you live for as a football fan. I don't know how much I've spent on Newcastle in my lifetime. Probably is in excess of 20, 30. I don't even know £1,000 with season tickets and shirts and away days. And it's all for these moments. And the fact, what makes this quite unique, when we've got to finals in the past, in the 90s, more recently, we've never had confirmation of the final in our own stadium. It's always been at neutral grounds, like Old Trafford, and uh, I think both at Old Trafford. Someone correct me on that. Maybe both at Old Trafford. Obviously, when Shearer scored that screamer in the semi-final back in the late 90s from the edge of the box. We've done it in neutral stadiums, which has been amazing. But the fact that the full-time whistle could go to St. James's Park on Tuesday night under the lights, and that could confirm Wembley with 52,000 fans there, is just an incredible thought that gets me a little bit jittery and makes me want to go and use this again. I don't think there's anything else coming out, not to go into too much detail, but that's how I'm feeling about this, and it, I'm excited to get in there. I'm excited to just uh, to 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 walk into what will be a new atmosphere, a new vibe. I don't expect fans to leave St James's Park if all goes well, but I'm not counting those chickens before they've hatched. I'm not even thinking about the feathers. I am not. It's difficult not to, because it's Southampton, and with as I said on the first leg match preview. We are better than them in defence. We are better than them in attack. We are better than, in, than them form-wise. And we are in front of a packed St James's Park roaring us on. Everything here points to a Newcastle win. And of course, I'm back in a Newcastle win. Southampton 
have got nothing to lose going into this one. I personally don't think from the vibes I got even being in Southampton last Tuesday when I went down for the match that this game means as much to them as it does to us. And I guess that's pretty obvious because of how where we are sitting pretty in the league. Southampton should have one focus, and I think they do, and that's safety. It will be lovely probably for them to get to a final, but I think when you're battling a relegation battle, it can almost be an unwelcome distraction. And I think if you were to ask Wigan fans who won the FA Cup and got relegated, which they would have preferred, I don't know. That day out at Wembley, I'll still be fighting in the divisions and not have that financial meltdown of a relegation. I don't know, it's a funny one for Southampton, but what, getting back to my earlier point, they have nothing to lose. They did cause us problems in the first leg. If you remember, Nick Pope's save from Che Adams was crucial, in a crucial stage in that game. They had a disallowed goal from Mr Adam Armstrong, and they did. And because they have nothing to lose, maybe as this game goes on, for example, if we are nil-nil after 60 minutes in the second half, they will start to throw the kitchen sink at us a little bit. I expect Eddie Howe to have us more drilled than ever. We've had a week off, which is amazing. Really, really is. Obviously, Southampton had to play a Blackpool at the weekend, so they've had another fixture. We've had a full week to mentally and physically prepare. I feel like players like Callum Wilson, who's looked a little bit off colour, that week off could have done him the world of good. And I expect us to go all guns blazing. I really, really do. Eddie Howe will want full possession of the football, very early on, he'll want that intensity that we've maybe seen in the second half of games more than in the first half more recently. But we are in the driving seat. We, Even if we get through by the scrape of our elbows, I do not care. Of course, I want this game done in 90 minutes. I could not think of anything worse than a penalty shootout to decide whether we go to Wembley or not. That literally gives me the worst shivers down my spine, I can... No, no, Newcastle, no thanks, no thanks. And a lot of fans have said to me, well, this is Newcastle, you know what we like. Yes, I agree, I do know what we like, but this is also a very different Newcastle under a different regime with a manager who does not let standards slip. And that's why I have full confidence we are going to win this football match. There'll be nerves, there'll be jitters, depending on how the first half goes. We need to get all of that football early doors, give the crowd something to shout about, and we'll be with them the whole way, but give us something to shout about early on so that cohesion between the, the stands and the football pitch blends together like the most beautiful smoothie you've ever tasted, like we know Newcastle can and St James's Park can, particularly under the lights, and we've got the quality. Now, team selection for this one, I would play Isaac. My stance hasn't changed on that, as I talked about in the last word after the last after the first leg. Isaac looks sharp as a dart. Callum Wilson looks like he could do with a break. I think this week off has been fantastic for Callum. He could be a, fa a brilliant impact substitution to bring on. Of course he would be. He's a goal scorer and we love the guy. St. Maximin for me, no. I think he is still someone to maybe bring on in the second half, depending on how the match is going. Keep our midfield the same for me, which might be a controversial opinion. I just want to see us solid defensively, putting that graft in, see how that first half goes, match them as they try and drive forward with the likes of um, Walker Peters and whatnot. They will be bobbing forward at every opportunity. I've got no doubts about that. But if we have all of the ball, we can't let that happen. That won't happen. And when we are in that final third, we are dangerous. And we have absolutely battered teams at St. James's Park recently. And Southampton should be no different. They've had a man sent off in the first leg, so they're a defender short on who they probably would have played in this game. And let's just get at them. Let's absolutely get at them like we've never got at them before. Because I've got no doubts about it. Eddie Howe will be telling every single one of them players what that match means to the, these fans and this city and what they could experience at the full-time whistle if they can do the job tomorrow night. I'm excited. I really am. And it won't probably set in for me until I wake up on the morning of the game and really sit down and gather my thoughts over a coffee and realise what could happen by 10 o'clock Tuesday night. So yeah, unchanged team for me, apart from Isaac, that's what I would go with. Maximin is bubbling to get out there. Anthony Gordon obviously is cooked hard for this one, so he won't be able to have any sort of say. I'm sure he'll be in the stands. He might be He might be welcome. There might be a couple of transfers between now and this game. It looks maybe that way with Shelby heading out and maybe a midfielder coming in to replace him. We don't know yet. It seems a little bit desperate times, if I'm being honest, to get a replacement for Shelby. I don't think that transfer was, was planned. 
that's come out of nowhere. So Eddie Howe's desperate not to have that and um, that weaker midfield with regards to options. But I'm fully expecting, let's forget, as I said at the start of this video, let's forget about this transfer stuff. I'm going for an onslaught. I fancy it. I do. I'm going to go 3-0 Newcastle with one of them second halves where we absolutely batter them. And we chant and we sing and we kick and we head every football with that team. And I can't wait to get in St. James's Park. Um, please, Newcastle fans, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what this match means to you. We are 90 minutes away from Wembley, Newcastle fans. St. James's Park could be this, what, what, could witness one of the biggest moments on that full-time whistle of my lifetime, and I'm sure a lot of Newcastle fans' lifetimes, if we can just get there, if we can just get over the line. And why wouldn't we back these boys? So let me know in the comments whether you're going to the game, how much this match means to you. I'm sure plenty of you have got your, your Wembley hotels booked. And let's get into these. Let's finish this job off. And let's get to that first final since the late 90s. My God, even talking about this match is giving me shivers. Um, if you've stuck around this long, Newcastle fans, whack that subscribe. I will be doing a match vlog from St. James's Park on Tuesday night. Hopefully speaking to some fans where the mood is unlike any mood I've ever experienced after the match. So make sure you, you catch that video by hitting the subscribe, give us a like, and I'll see you on the next video, which might be a transfer one before Tuesday night, but if not, from St. James's Park. How are Eddie Howe's Wembley Mags? Come on, boys, you can do it. I'll see you on the next one. How are the lads? <laughs>